Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Dynasty After Dark. I'm your host, Calvin Timms. Find me over on Twitter at TDC underscore Calvin. And I've got another bonus episode for you guys today. So couldn't wait. Really excited to put this one out there. The Chicago Bears have traded back the number one overall pick in a massive haul from Carolina. So if you haven't heard yet, Carolina gets the number one overall pick and the Bears Man, they got a haul. They got a massive haul. This is one of the biggest annoyances for me listening to all these podcasts lately where they're doing mock drafts. Oh, Carolina's going to give uh, the number nine and, and a first round pick. And it's just like that's not enough for the Bears to move back that far in a bidding war with quarterbacks, right? So I'm really happy to see what the Bears got in this. Number nine, number 61 in this year's draft. So a first and a second in this year's draft. A first round pick in 2024, which is likely to be a top top-ish pick. Um, a lot of people are already putting on the 101, but you never know who's going to fall apart. So let's say a top 10 pick in 2024 as well. A second round pick in 2025 and then wide receiver DJ Moore. DJ Moore. Man, what to do with DJ Moore now that he's on the Chicago Bears. Now, of course, we need to see what the Bears are going to do in the NFL draft. At number nine, that's the perfect place to take someone like a Jackson Smith and Jigba. And with all the receiving help that they do need on this team, that would still be very interesting. I would love to see DJ Moore and JSN on this team. You know, you've got a Chase Claypool and a Darnell Mooney on the outsides as the number three guy. They can kind of split that role. Cole Komet in the tight end position. And then you go and get someone like a Miles Sanders for the backfield. This team is looking pretty good. It could be looking very, very spicy very quickly. You retooled the offensive line. There's a lot of opportunity for that next week with free agency. So the reason why I wanted to talk on DJ Moore specifically here, because I have seen a lot of people on Twitter, oh, there's no reason to be excited about DJ Moore. There's no reason at all. The Chicago Bears, they just don't pass very often. They're, you know, Sam Darnold threw 50 more passes than Justin Fields in 12 games. There, he's he's going to a quarterback downgrade. You can't go and get DJ Moore. DJ Moore is a great dynasty buy right now, and I'm gonna lay out the case for him. So, if you go and look at DJ Moore, the one downside for DJ Moore is he's not what everyone expected him to be. But through his his entire career so far, he has not had a reliable quarterback to you know get him the ball. He's been the featured number one for a while now, and I don't know necessarily if The Chicago passing game is going to be the best in the world, but at worst, at worst, it's not going to be a downgrade. So here's the thing. If you go and look at, you know, some of the other guys on this team, go and look at Darnell Mooney from 2022, 61 passing attempts this past year, Chase Claypool, you know, it's kind of mixed, so it's hard to tell exactly how much is going there. Equinemia St. Brown, 40 passing attempts, whereas DJ Moore in 2022 and most of his career, you know, 2022 was a little bit of a down year. Maybe 2021 was an up year, hard to tell. But he's always around 120 targets a, a year with about, you know, somewhere between 60 to 90 catches in a year. 1,100 yards in 2021, 900 yards basically last year. But again, the quarterback play was terrible. Always has right around four or five touchdowns in the season. So he's not an elite, elite wide receiver option. But again, at worst, this is a lateral move. Now, the Chicago Bears, I wanted to read this stat off because I found it extremely telling. And I talked about this a little bit already with what should the what should the Bears do with Justin Fields. Obviously, they're keeping him, and they should have. You know, this was always the plan, I believe, and you know, it's starting to pay out. But if you look at this offensive line from last year, they ranked, they were actually pretty good in run blocking. So to be fair to the Bears offensive line, I think they were top, they were number seven overall in run blocking last year. But when it came to pass blocking, they were the 32nd ranked offensive line. They could not even utilize the like they could not keep anything off of Justin Fields in the passing game. So this stat was crazy. 
So the Bears gave up a pressure of 52% on true pass sets, where, and those are passes where it's not like a play action or a screen pass or something like that. That's plays where Justin Fields gets the ball, has to drop back, make a read, and make a throw. That is the worst, second worst mark um, in the NFL. The average in the NFL is 37%. So he's being he's being pressured 15% higher on true pass sets, and they did it less than anyone else in the league. They could not keep guys off Justin Fields. So what did they do? They pivoted later on in the season to the the fact that they were um, they were running more plays, more more play action, more screen passes. They were trying to hide the deficiencies of this offensive line in the passing game on the later half of the season. You're gonna go and you can look and there's offensive line stats and this is by Jonathan Wood and he put this out in December. So wanted to give him a shout out. Jonathan underscore underscore Wood one on Twitter if you want to go check out this thread. But it's an amazing thread from December of last year. But basically they um, he talks about the Bears. If you go and look at them, they're gonna have a very good end of season ranking on their offensive line. One, it's because the pat the the run blocking was so good, and two, because they passed so much less than the other teams because they could not defend Justin Fields, that it also doubles up into the run blocking where they were already strong there. So that's the problem with this offensive line. I believe next week in free agency they're gonna fix that up. And if this offensive line can be decent at best, decent, not 32nd in pass blocking, but you know, 15, 16, not even top 10. If they can just get to average in the NFL, I think we're going to see a massive step forward from Justin Fields. Justin Fields is so criminally underrated as a passer right now in the NFL. It's crazy. They haven't had to utilize him in that regard just yet. So I believe Justin Fields is going to take a step forward. Now that said, Again, worst case scenario for DJ Moore, he's going to see lateral production from what he saw in Carolina. It all depends on what the scheme is going to be for this offense. You know, I think that they're still going to be a run first team, but that doesn't necessarily mean that DJ Moore is going to be bad. Last year, down quarterback play, 118 targets, 63 catches for 900 yards and seven touchdowns. Throughout his entire career, he's averaging about 14 yards per catch. He's averaging about seven to eight yards per target. So he's doubling up what he gets targeted, which means he's doing a lot after the catch. And that's where DJ Moore is very scary. You go and you look at Justin Fields. He's going to give guys chances. He's not someone who's afraid to try and fit the ball into a tight window. So DJ Moore, I believe, is an awesome buy right now because at worst, it's lateral. At best, it's an upgrade. And, you know, if he upgrades, he's been the wide receiver number 24, 18, 23, 16. So he hasn't really broken into the top 12. I think that he could become a very solid, solidified top 15, 16 wide receiver for fantasy football. And then what is that going to cost you? I'd probably be willing to spend a late first round pick on DJ Moore. I'd rather have him probably than someone like a, you know, a Jordan Addison who has a lot of potential, but is on the small side. So would be an outlier. Now this is going to change as you're going towards the draft. Maybe some of these guys are going to move up or down the board as such um, once they have landing spots. But Give me DJ Moore over some of these guys that are going in the late first as a wide receiver in this year's draft class. I think DJ DJ Moore is a proven talent. We can see what he can do. You know, we've seen what he can do, and he's a very, very good player when given opportunity. It's just been a very rough road for him so far. He's only 25 years old, and he's got five years. He came out as a 20-year-old wide receiver, and I think that the best days of his career are ahead of him. So give me DJ Moore for a late first-round pick. I think that you guys should be investing in him as well. Don't let the narrative that Justin Fields is a bad passer put you off of DJ Moore. Justin Fields is going to get better in the passing game. If you look at it, and just quick on Justin Fields again, Last year, they had 318 passing attempts, only an up, uptick of 40 passing attempts, 50 passing attempts in three more games from his rookie season. They just have not had the offensive line to protect him in the passing game, so they've leaned heavily on the running game. 
or his career so far. And just because he can do that doesn't mean that is going to be the end all be all of his career. Now, once Justin Fields does take a little bit of an uptick in passing, that doesn't necessarily mean he's going to be the best. But this isn't about Justin Fields. This is about DJ Moore. I think DJ Moore is going to see at least 120 targets this year. I believe that truly um, with the talent that's on this roster. Again, if they had a Jackson Smith and Jigba, might change things a little bit. But for an early second, late first, I'd still take DJ Moore over those receivers all day. Again, he's got five years of experience, and he's only 25 years old. There's a lot of potential left in DJ Moore. He hasn't lived up to it just yet, but I think coming over to this offense and trading for him, getting him in the trade, I think is going to be amazing for his value. They're going to try and find ways to scheme him open going forward into 2023 and beyond. So DJ Moore, late first round pick. Let me know your thoughts over on Twitter. If you can, like, comment, subscribe on the video. I appreciate you guys joining me for this one. Again, I just wanted to get this one out there. Very, very excited about the addition of DJ Moore to the Chicago Bears. They're going to get this offensive line turned around, and the Bears, man, they are doing this rebuild right. So go invest in DJ Moore while you can. Let me know your thoughts over on Twitter. Hit me up on YouTube in the comments. And again, thank you guys for joining me. Have a good night.